Mitz Burling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm here with John Herlocker of Tignus. going to talk today about AI basics. This will be the first in a series on AI in semiconductor manufacturing. John, AI is coming into almost everything these days. It's in chips, it's in manufacturing, it's basically all the way through the semiconductor supply chain. What do we need to know in order to be able to work with this? Thanks, Ed. Um, well, I think it's important to start with, uh, I like to start with some basic definitions of what AI actually is, because I think sometimes uh, we get mixed messages or, or confusion because of the learnings. So uh, I usually start with, you know, this little Venn diagram here, because, you know, people use the words AI, they talk about machine learning, they talk about lar large language models. It's like a, a you know, soup of, of terminology. So, so let's just kind of walk through this really quickly. So actually, the hardest one to define is, is really the, the top category. What, what is AI more broadly? One of my favorite definitions for AI is it's really things that are, uh, it's, it's stuff that previously could only be done by humans, right? It's sort of the best definition I've come up for. And it, it's almost something that changes over time. So sort of inside of AI is what we have machine learning, which has always been a subset of AI, and it's, it's really using large amounts of data. Uh, it's machines using large amounts of data to learn to do useful stuff is a nice kind of uh, definition of that. Within machine learning, we're talking more about this in later sessions, we have you know, something called deep learning, which is a very specific kind of neural network that has really transformed the way we can apply AI and, and allowed to us to do, and we'll talk a bit more about that later. Um, in, you know, one kind of deep learning are these large language models. And actually, they're becoming much more than just language models today. They can also take images, etc. And these are the things that power stuff like ChatGPT and all that kind of stuff. And you know, large language models have been sort of a major source of the transformation that we're going through right now and the acceleration of AI. I mean, initially sort of deep learning kind of started that journey, large language models, a specific kind of deep learning that most recently accelerated it. And now, of course, it's all about agentic AI. And agentic AI is, again, using this baseline of these large models, like large language models, but giving those sort of large language models, creating software that is powered by these large language models and giving them tools and objectives, right? So they can perform autonomously and collaborate with each other. And so I think, you know, this is kind of the, in some sense, the, the Venn diagram of innovation that's leading to the massive transformation that we are seeing today. We've been talking about AI and machine learning since probably the late 50s. Why has it suddenly taken off and no longer science fiction, but actually usable? That's right. Well, I mean, it wasn't, it's not a, a sudden thing. It was really this, this stack, right? Initially, like machine learning wasn't the hot part of AI, and then it sort of started to gain steam, and we lear learned how good it was. And then there were really this breakthrough of deep learning. There's, you know, there's an early work uh, that kind of, early on somebody showed that a, a non-deep layer neural network could solve any computational problem, which kind of stunted a lot of growth. But then suddenly there was this huge breakthrough in deep learning and people realized, wow, we can solve these really deep problems. And then that led to the, def uh, the creation of this new algorithm called the transformer, right? Which was the core, which really enabled magical stuff to happen from a large language model thing. Uh, and then finally we've, we've realized, oh, you know, we can even get out of the loop entirely and let these agents. So I think it's really this chain of innovations from an algorithmic perspective, right? From a process perspective that combined with computational capabilities. So, you know, we've learned that we, you know, once we learned how powerful deep learning was, we also realized, wow, these things that we use for graphics processors are really great for accelerating computation. And so I think it's really a it's combination, mostly it's really algorithmic development, these new ways of representing the, the computation that have breakthroughs, but combine that with, you know, the computational advances in hardware, and finally, just the availability of masses of data, right? So these, these large language models are large, right? They come from massive amounts of data. The internet basically provided that data to enable these kind of things to happen. So it was really a, a confluence of all these, these factors that led to suddenly a huge kind of step function in what we can achieve.
Did anybody actually see this coming? Was it more of a just, hey, all the pieces are here, now we can do something, or this is the missing piece, we have to fix this? Well, I mean, I think, as you know, as you said, like, uh, AI has been around since the 50s, and so people have had dreams that, you know, we'd have artificial general intelligence, which is like, you know, intel uh, machines thinking almost like humans. So there's always been this dream, and there's always been people who said, oh, it's going to happen quickly. Um, but I think that, you know, it's kind of the thing that I would say, for example, large language models, which are really the most recent breakthrough, I think they surprised everybody, right? I think there was... Uh, you know, there's sort of this this belief that, wow, these systems we built can do so many things that we didn't even plan for, right? So I'd say, you know, yeah, from a visionary perspective, people have always seen this happen. No one's been able to predict when it happened. And I don't think anybody had any idea that this large language model would have such a step function at the time that it did. So what's the practical application of this when you start getting into semiconductor manufacturing? Yeah, so it's... When we think about semiconductor manufacturing, we're often thinking about the tools and equipment and stuff, and we'll get to that. But but I actually say that like everybody in manufacturing, you know, don't miss the basics, right? Tools like ChatGPT, et cetera, can be very powerful to accelerating, you know, your supply chain work, right, or um, your back office stuff, or you know, just generating your documentation, et cetera. So. I would say AI actually can accelerate every part of your business, right? Not just your engineering part of the business. Uh, but since this is semiconductor engineering, let's uh, let's focus today a bit on sort of where the engineering capabilities are. So, you know, on your semiconductor manufacturing floor, you have a large number of tools that are generating huge amounts of data, and I think this is the place that you know AI has a very strong opportunity to improve, right? So you can, um, and again, people often talk about, you know, yield, right? Absolutely. AI, uh, both machine, classic machine learning, you know, and some of these uh, large language capabilities and these agentic capabilities, they're all going to improve yield. They're going to improve quality, right? Absolutely. Um, they're going to significantly, they can automate a lot of stuff that perhaps you have done today uh, that is manual and that's going to improve, decrease your costs, right? Improve your efficiencies and this kind of stuff. Uh, applying AI to these equipment uh, systems are going to improve your maintenance and improve your uptime and your OEE. Absolutely an opportunity there. But the thing I like to say is that perhaps more important than all of that, and you could ask what's more important than yield and uptime, is that AI is just going to make your organization operate faster, more agile, right? You're going to be able to respond to competitive threats faster, and so on. And then, and, you know, you can, when some issue happens, you're going to resolve it faster. You'll be able to train people faster. Like, there's just a broad improvement in the productivity of your organization by applying AI. And this isn't a replacement for expertise. It just pushes the expertise to think at a higher level, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, th that's a hundred percent the case, right? Like, uh, the AI technology that we have today, even when we get down to the agentic stuff, you know, there's some amount of automation it can do, but it can't actually completely replace the human expertise, right? Uh, it's really, I, I like to think of it, you like the word augmentation, right? AI is really about augmenting human intelligence and accelerating it, right? Um, and it's going to enable you to, you know, take that expertise and spend less of the time reacting to problems, right, and more of your time planning for the future and solutions of this kind of stuff. So getting better and less time just keeping the line running. So, John, in the next part of this series, let's take a deeper dive into AI and machine learning. That sounds good. Yeah, I think the, um, you know, beyond the the bottom of all this is or the foundation of all of this is machine learning so i think it's important for us to kind of understand what is machine learning at its core so i'm looking forward to talking about that